This is the shocking life story about Meryl Streep. From being a self-taught theatre actress to holding the highest record number of Golden Globe nominations to getting wrecked by love and then becoming number one public enemy with Donald Trump. Stay tuned to learn more about her intriguing life while enjoying her rare photos. Meryl Louise Streep was born on June 22, 1949 in Summit, New Jersey. Young Meryl attended Cedar Hill Elementary School and in her first year in junior school, she was featured in the play The Family Upstairs. Streep was highly introvert and dreaded putting herself out there. But despite that, she knew from a very young age that she wanted to be an actress. As a child, she would put on plays with her siblings and friends and was always drawn to the world of storytelling and performance. But she was tall and awkward as a teenager, and she felt like she didn't fit in with her peers. This feeling of being different and on the outside looking in has been a recurring theme in her life and work. Streep's family moved frequently when she was growing up, which meant that she had to adjust to new schools and make new friends on a regular basis. This was difficult for her, and she has said that it made her feel like an outsider at times. In school, Meryl was often described as a talented gawky kid with frizzy hair and her teachers always wanted to have her in performances. She was selected to sing at a school recital when she was 12. Although she had remarkable singing talent, Meryl would quit after four years because she felt that singing was never her thing. She felt out of place. I was singing something I didn't feel and understand. That was an important lesson not to do it. The actress shared. But starring in the play, Miss Julie, at Vassar College, was just a universe way of confirming that she was meant to be an actress. As the play was widely successful, she received numerous accolades for her performances. She felt inspired. Meryl applied for a Master of Fine Arts at the Yale School of Drama. Her parents were not buoyant enough for such a prestigious school, so Streep would take side jobs as a typist and a waiter to support herself. Streep struggled financially in her early days of acting living on a tight budget and sometimes struggling to make ends meet. At one point, she even slept in a friend's apartment on a loft bed. Meryl worked like a bull as she tried to keep school and acting going, and by the end of her first year, she considered quitting acting for a law degree. But she slept in on her application day, and this she considered as a sign not to do it. She fought through drama school and received her MFA from Yale in 1975, and an honorary Doctor of Arts degree six years later. Meryl made her stage debut that same year in the comic play Trelawney of the Wells and her film debut in 1977 in Julia. The actress received her first Oscar nomination for The Deer Hunter and won an Academy Award for the Best Supporting Actress for her role in Kramer Kramer. Streep was admired by many because she could adapt to many kinds of acting. Unlike many actresses in the industry known for a particular style, Meryl was often referred to as the industry's chameleon who could switch accents whenever she fancied. The Bridgets of Madison County remains one of the biggest projects of her career, scoring an estimated $70 million in the United States alone. But quite interestingly, Streep never wanted to do anything with it in the first place. She hated the novel that the movie was based on but she decided to gamble around it, and it was the bomb. Meryl had to gain weight to fit into the character in the film. Free Shakespeare in Central Park in New York. As she tried to mirror voluptuous Italian actresses like Sophia Loren. With a career spanning over five decades, the American actress has over 21 Academy Award nominations, 32 Global Award nominations, of which she won eight, and a host of other notable achievements. But Meryl Streep's life was not all sunshine and rainbows. Everything she has today that is bragworthy was fought, scratched, and clawed for. Meryl Streep was that young, naive actress when she met actor John Castle. She was in her 20s while the actor was 14 years her senior. Like the best of all popular doomed relationships, their connection was an instant click when they starred in the New York Shakespeare Festival production Measure for Measure in 1976. John charmed his way into the actress's heart, and as she told the NY Post, he wasn't like anyone I've met. It was the specificity of him and his sort of humanity and his curiosity about people. But after two years, Meryl wishes she and John had never crossed paths. They both were young stars trying to walk their way up the ladder of fame, and they worked so hard to the determinant of their health.
While Merrill had a deal with an ulcer, John was diagnosed with something much more deadly, terminal lung cancer. The actor tried to live with the disease, but sooner than he expected, the test results revealed that he only had a few months to live. Merrill was so devastated, she took a five-month break from the screen to take care of her dying love while secretly banking on a miracle. She took care of him like there was nobody else on earth. Theater producer Joe Papp told People he knew he was dying like the way a dying man knows it. She gave him tremendous hope. Merrill believed it, but John wasn't going to stay. He died on March 12, 1978. The news shattered Streep's heart and according to People, she was seen lying on his lifeless body, pounding his chest and she cried aloud for him to wake up. Merrill came face to face with her worst nightmare of spending the rest of her life without the man she loved so much. And to aggravate matters, she was kicked out of the apartment she'd shared with her deceased lover even before she could fully sort his belongings. She was at the darkest place she could ever be. But life would smile at her again, compensating her for her love's injustice. After Street was kicked out of John's apartment, she had to ask her brother Harry for help. And Harry brought his friend Don Gummer, who lived blocks away. At that time, Gummer was preparing to leave the country, so he invited the heartbroken actress to stay in his Soho loft and take care of things while he was away. At first, they started by sending out casual letters to each other. But when things evolved into a more serious and complicated relationship, Meryl backed out. She was scared of putting herself out there again, just after a few months of lying next to her lover as he took his dying breath. But a close friend would encourage her to give Gummer a chance if she liked him, and she went for it. Within six months of courtship, on September 30, 1978, Gummer and Meryl tied the knot. Meryl's mother was not very comfortable with how fast things went, but the years proved that she had nothing to be afraid of. The early years of their marriage demanded a lot of understanding for both of them, as Meryl would always spend weeks away from her family, shooting films. But Gummer was the perfect spouse. On the stage of one of her Academy Award confirmant, the American actress gave a special shout-out to her husband, the man who had helped her live again. She said, First, I'm going to thank Don, because when you thank your husband at the end of the speech, they played him out with music. And I want to let him know that everything I value most in our lives you've given me. The couple recently celebrated 44 years of marital bliss. But as the actress confessed, nothing would ever fill the vacuum in her heart for the deceased lover. And she would even risk her high-profile career because of this. I didn't get over it. I don't want to ever get over it. No matter what you do, the pain is always there in some recess of the mind. Merrill confessed in an interview about John. After his death, Merrill became extra picky about the kind of movie roles she accepted. Because of her easy adaptability to any role and her unique ability to mimic a list of accents, Streep always had work on her table. But she avoided movies with too much depression, as she saw them as emotional triggers. Meryl starred in the 1979 American drama film Kramer Kramer, but what a lot of people probably did not know is that the show creators had to rewrite the plot of the drama because of Streep. She was cast as a depressed married woman who abandoned her husband and her child. But the actress thought that the character was too evil and argued that it didn't portray the struggles women face in a broken home and child custody cases. They would tweak the character because of her and the director Robert Benton would even let her script two of her key dialogues. The American actress bagged a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award for her performance in this drama film. But even darker roles kept coming, and at some point, she was forced to make a very tough and risky career decision. Seeing that she couldn't do much about the roles that wouldn't stop bugging her, in 1990, Streep committed the next five years of her acting career to take comedy roles. This inspired her features in movies like the 1989's She Devil, 1991's Defending Your Life, and 1992 Death Becomes of Her. And she would even take a voice acting part in the 1994 episode of The Simpsons as Bart's crush, Jessica Loveday. But comedy was not as easy as Meryl had thought it to be, even for a woman of her talent. The actress revealed that her most difficult roles came as she made the transition to comedy, and the toughest of them all was the 1992's Death Becomes of Her. At first, when Meryl read the scripts, she thought that she would be playing the character of Helen, the knowledgeable writer. She had no idea that director Zemeckis wanted her as Madeline. 
she had handled the role so well, but behind the scenes, the actress was almost losing her mind. First, the movie shot was for seven months, one of the longest of her career. And secondly, as Madeline, the much older lady with the weird obsession with her image, which fueled her animosity towards much younger ladies, Streep gave the makeup artist a lot of work because of her cosmetic allergies. Prosthetics became the next option on the table to make her fit into her much older character. Was it all worth it? Well, the movie hit $15 million in the first five days, and while Meryl might probably be more known for her drama roles, Death Becomes of Her remains on top of the list of her fan favorites in her many comedy appearances. It earned her a much-deserved Golden Globe nomination in early 1993. Quite interestingly, with her record-breaking achievements in the industry, Meryl found little fulfillment in Hollywood's glamours. She's much more grateful for something more intrinsic. Meryl is considered one of the best talents of her generation. With 32 Golden Globe nominations, the very first actress to achieve such a feat, Meryl confessed that she would be totally lost and incomplete without her husband and her four children. The American actress gave birth to her first child, Henry, 14 months after her marriage to Don. This baby is an affirmative commitment in pretty desperate times, she told People magazine. It is the biggest thing that has ever happened to me. She had three other children after Henry, Mamie, Grace, and Louisa. Henry wanted to follow his mother's footsteps by joining the acting industry, but he gave up the dream two years into college and decided to specialize in music production. 20 months old Mamie had her screen debut alongside her mother in the 1986 film Heartburn, and she worked as a model when she was much older before returning to acting. Grace, like her mom and her older sister, would become an actress and had her first role playing as a younger version of her mother's character in the 1993 movie House of Spirits. Louisa, Streep's youngest child, has a degree in psychology and a fine arts degree from Yale School of Drama. She is also involved in the screen business from time to time. Streep, in an interview, was asked which was the hardest thing to do between parenting and acting. The Mamma Mia star wasted no time to score parenting as the toughest job. According to her, mothering is about a lot of uncertainties that needs to be managed properly, unlike acting, which was scripted. In addition, Meryl doesn't think of acting as hard work. I can really call acting work since it's secretly so fun. Even the difficult things, it's satisfying to do difficult things so well. Meryl tries as much as she can to protect her family by keeping their life as private as possible. And I think, looking back at all these years, she would be proud of how far she has come and how much of work she has invested. Meryl Streep is extremely passionate about the protection of women's rights. She is always eager and fascinated to talk about the subject. The actress was appointed as the national spokesperson for the country's first National Women's History Museum. In 2006, the American actress hosted a special screening for The Devil Wears Prada. She auctioned off her designer wardrobe from the film and distributed her proceeds amongst many of the charities, including Equality Now, an NGO that advocates for the protection and promotion of human rights of women and girls. The actress, on many occasions, has described herself as a man-eating feminist, and in 2010, she pledged $1 million to the women's rights cause. Streep talked about these rights everywhere she went on stage, on award shows, interviews, and podcasts, and she doesn't fail to compliment producers and directors who create opportunities for female-led roles in the industry. The celebrity actress is also an avid advocate of wage equality, as seen in the way she cheered Patricia Arquette in 2015 at the Oscars. In 2017, at the 74th Golden Globe Awards, Meryl publicly criticized the president-elect Donald Trump. Trump had mocked the disabled reporter. Sergey Kowalski and Meryl was irritated by his attitude. According to her, Trump was asking to sit in the most respectable seat in the country, and he shouldn't mock people because he outranked them in power, privilege, and capacity to fight back. Trump responded via tweet that Meryl was one of the most overrated actresses in Hollywood and a Hillary flunk who lost at big. In 2014, Streep was honored with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award in the United States by former President Barack Obama, who said that he still loves the actress and there was nothing her husband or his wife could do about it. The 2000s kept the actress busy with voice acting jobs. 
She did a voice cameo in Steven Spielberg's Artificial Intelligence, and she also hosted the annual Nobel Peace Prize concert with actor Liam Neeson. Fast forward to 2006, and a celebrity actress had the biggest commercial success of her career with a comedy drama, The Devil Wears Prada, a loose screen adaptation of Orrin Weiss Berger's 2003 novel. Her next big thing was in 2008 with Philadelphia's Lloyd Mamma Mia, a box office record breaker with receipts of over $602.6 million. It ranked first in the highest grossing musical that year. Streep collaborated with Mamma Mia director Philadelphia Lloyd once again in 2010 on The Iron Lady, but sadly, this was not as hot as they thought it to be. But the actress's performance earned her a Golden Globe Best Actress Award and her third win at the Academy Awards. Meryl also reteams with Prada's director, David Frankel, on the romantic comedy drama film Hope Springs. In 2015, the actress worked on the set of Ricky and The Flash with her eldest daughter, Mamie. Meryl briefly reprised her Mamma Mia role in 2018. Her more recent projects include voicing a role in the Apple TV Plus animated short film Here We Are. She was also cast alongside Leonardo DiCaprio and actress Jennifer Lawrence in the 2021 black comedy film Don't Look Up. Meryl was an executive producer of Sell, Buy, Date, which was directed by Sarah Jones. The actress is expected to appear in an Apple TV Plus anthology series, Extrapolations, and in the third season of the Hulu comedy series, Only Murderers in the Building. Meryl Streep has expressed full intentions to keep the screen business on for the time being, and while she's not doing that, the actress is channeling her energy and dedication to the women's rights protection cause. In all she's doing for the women's industry, she has said that her grandmother, who didn't have the right to vote, has been her biggest inspiration. Meryl has tasted the highs and lows of the entertainment industry and triumphed to become a classic example of the industry's high-profile talents, and she is a self-taught actress. I don't think anyone ever taught Meryl acting. She really taught herself. Vassar drama professor Clinton J. Atkinson. Meryl Streep, now 73, is a proud and accomplished wife, mother, grandmother, and an actress. She's lived in New York Bernardsville and owns a $3.6 million property in Pasadena, California. The celebrity actress has an estimated net worth of $160 million. Now on to you. What do you remember about Meryl Streep? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to watch the rest of our videos on beautiful actresses of yesteryear. As always, thank you for watching.